Hi, I'm Edward Schreweller. I'm the Chief Executive at Driving Mobility. Driving Mobility is a network of independent driving assessment centres spread right across the country. There are some 20 of these main centres and each one has smaller outfits which are closer to where some of our clients live. In all, the network comprises around 75 centres where you can come for a driving assessment, mainly in order to address driving, but sometimes with other services offered as well. My name is David Blythe and I'm one of the trustees of Drive Mobility and I also manage the William Merritt Disabled Living Centre, which you will hear more about later. Drive Mobility is a registered charity supported by and working with the Department for Transport to provide accredited fitness to drive assessments for disabled people, elderly and frail individuals so they can gain or remain driving and independently mobile for longer. Our members consist of independent charities and NHS centres. Driving Mobility is the sort of umbrella organisation that um, accredits all the mobility centres, so has all the standards for the driving assessments and the way services run. So Driving Mobility's vision is to enable independence for people with disabilities, frailties or long-term medical conditions, just to keep them independently mobile through equipment and driving adaptions and scooters. The main goal of the driving mobility centres is to ensure people can stay independently mobile as long as possible, either gain independence or retain their independence. These centres are, are, are crucial as, as part of everybody's um, um, will, if you like, to remain uh, independently mobile. Uh, to actually have an assessment to know that you are safe on the road is very valuable because some conditions you may question it. So to be able to come along to it and have a qualified clinician uh, and a, a, a driving instructor to work with you uh, to actually say yes you are safe to drive on the road can be very valuable. A lot of people when they come out of hospital after having a stroke and sort of bits of them aren't moving like they used to and they don't realise and very often their partners don't realise that they could probably still drive. Not everybody, but a lot of, a certain, certainly a huge percentage of them will be able to drive again. That makes a big difference to people because, you know, having had something taken away from them, the fact that they can then go back to doing something which gives them so much freedom, it's so important to them to have that independence, you know, to know that you're not stuck in these four walls. And you can go out to the park, you can go and visit places. There's all this help out there, all these places you can go to you probably didn't, may not have realised before, you may have been in a job where you never have time to even think about what you're doing and suddenly this affects you in this way and suddenly you think, I'm not going to be able to do anything anymore, but actually you can. And it really does change people's lives. Our services are so important for mental health and well-being. Being able to get out and about reduces depression, isolation, loneliness and the independence it offers people to access their community and all the amenities and the services that they need is vital. Attending a driving assessment is not like taking a driving test. You'll be supported by caring and understanding staff who will put you at ease during the process. To begin, an occupational therapist and an approved driving instructor will discuss your medical condition and how it affects your driving and then decide on the most suitable vehicle to meet your needs. Firstly we get all the medical knowledge from different professions and then we interview the client to see what their needs are and what their abilities are. We find out what um, car they drive, um, what driving experience they've got. Then we try and match their vehicle so that it's not too different to their own. It doesn't always happen that way but uh, as near as we can so if they drive an automatic we provide an automatic vehicle for them. 
um, and then um, we try and put them at ease as much as we can. We explain all the assessment and what it requires um, and then on road try and put them at ease as well. The William Merritt Centre and all the other driving mobility centres have a lot of different vehicles in different sizes, with different adaptions, also manual and automatic. So even though you don't drive your own vehicle during your assessment, there's lots of options so it can be the closest possible fit to you so you feel comfortable during the assessment. Push-pull hand controls are an adaptation that you would use with your hands. Um, so how they work, more often than not, the push-pull mechanism is fitted to the right-hand side of the steering wheel, just below the steering wheel. So you push to brake and you pull away to accelerate. Um, so a switching unit is um, what we call a secondary control unit um, and that basically has two functions. So number one, it's used as a steering aid, um, so it's on the steering wheel, mounted at whichever side you need it at. Everything's at the touch of a thumb basically. A left foot accelerator comes in, in two different types, um, so you can have a floor mounted version or one that's called a twin flip um, and that's predominantly used for people who have got um, lower limb, um, so in the right foot they've, they've obviously either lost movement, function, sensation, anything like that um, and they've only got function in their left, left leg and um, so they will use that to control the car. We also provide guidance regarding specialist car seats for disabled children to ensure safety and postural support as an estimated 74% of car seats are fitted incorrectly. The car seat assessment will ensure your child's car seat is compatible with your vehicle. During the appointment, the postural needs of the child and the moving handling issues arising will be assessed. A unique service we offer is help and support for air travel with a disability using the Try Before You Fly service. This service is fantastic because it gives clients the opportunity to do things that maybe they thought would never have been possible and the confidence before they fly to know what to expect and make sure that all the postural supports are available. So basically in the uh, Try Before You Fly assessment, um, the assessment consists of a run through of what it would be like to actually transfer the plane, board it, going along the aisles and getting into the seat so the client will know exactly what it's like to fly with a disability. The Department of Transport has funded a pilot scheme creating seven regional transportation hubs across the country and we hope to add several more next year. The purpose of our hubs is to provide information on realistic transport options for individuals and their families, offering advice and guidance for local, national and international travel, as well as public transport options. Driving mobility also offers passenger assessments. Sometimes a driver or passenger may have difficulty getting in and out of a vehicle, or may uh, the safety of a passenger uh, who has challenging behaviour is a concern. Access assessments address all of these needs, whatever the difficulty. Additionally, Drive and Mobility run clinically led mobility scooter and powered wheelchair assessments across the country, offering an impartial assessment on which product is suitable for you and whether you can operate it safely, focusing on your individual needs. The best thing about Drive and Mobility, obviously, we all love our cars. You know, we've grown up with it and, and I think the fact that we, can, we have a process where we can signpost people uh, to remain driving for longer is, is a fantastic asset to the country. Uh, we keep people working, we keep people socialising um, and again there's other links that we have. We have a very good link with Motability um, and we have a very good link with Driving uh, Vehicle Licensing Authority. So between us we're able to keep people driving. Confidence is, um, is, a, is a factor, 
Um, some of the people we see haven't, you know, they haven't been out and about, or if it's driving, they haven't been in a car for quite a long time. Um, so, so their confidence can be lacking. Um, we, we, have, um, we have sort of uh, procedures in place to help their confidence, whether that be through a bit of practice being in the car um, or, or practice being, being out and about in general is to help people and to enable people to, to become mobile or, or to maintain their independence. Driving Mobility is responsible for maintaining the high standards of delivery via our accreditation system. But the main way that we maintain the high standards is, is there's two ways. There's actually the education of the driving assessors, that we do insist that the driving assessors attend a university course to level four, level seven. And then every centre, in every three years, is assessed for its quality of delivery. Driving Mobility is working very closely with the government on its inclusive transport strategy. And I think the, the, the key to that, although a lot of it is about using public transport, it's also about being independent, um, about having the choice of how to move about. So as well as helping people to continue driving as long as they need to, it's also about helping people to transition to use of public transport, community transport, and other, other ways of getting about. Driving mobility is planning for the future by looking where, where in the country we still need to find outreach to develop new services, but also looking at alternatives to driving. How can we help people who do need to transition away from driving? How can we help older people with an aging population discover whether they're still fit to drive? And if not, how to find ways to get about and to retain independent living. If you are nervous at all and want to know anything about driving with a long-term condition, um, especially if you're newly diagnosed um, and you, you don't know how to inform DVLA uh, or even, even go about approaching driving again if you've, if you've had to give up driving uh, at any, any time, pick up the phone and talk to one of our clinicians. They can initially put you at ease and tell you the next step to take. And Driving Mobility has, has uh, the whole country at hand uh, that they can signpost you to any one of our centres uh, throughout the UK. If you have any questions or would like to know more about the Fitness to Drive services, please contact us on 0800 559 3636 or via email at info at drivemobility.org.uk and one of our clinicians or driving instructors will be able to answer any of your questions and explain the main process involved in a driving assessment. Thank you for your time and if you would like to find the nearest assessment centre to you, please visit our website at www.drivingmobility.org.uk. Thank you.